Welcome to the second edition of Mind, Mood and Food. With me, Margaret Bell and Adele Derbyshire. Now, we didn't actually introduce ourselves <laughs> on our first podcast, but you know what? Uh, we're learning as we go along. So I am an anti-diet empowerment coach and a gut health expert. So I really help ladies move from disordered eating to food freedom. And I'll let you introduce yourself. Adele. Yeah, yeah, we didn't. We forgot about that. And we assumed everyone would know who we were. Of course, <laughs> but, you know, we? yeah, exactly. <laughs> they will do when they finish listening to uh, our wonderful podcast. So my name's Adele, Adele Derbyshire, and I have a business called Find Your Inner Sparkle with Adele. And it is all about mindset um, and physical health through yoga. So a lot of the tools of yoga have helped me to get healthy and and um, strong and flexible in my body as well as my mind and I love to share that with other people um, because I do believe in being strong and flexible both physically and mentally so what that means is just being able to use certain tools and mindset and thought processes to not be rigid um, either physically or mentally so you're able to you're much more able to be like water to go with the flow to be resilient when things come up in life that you're not kind of knocked down you're easily able to adapt and change um, and be more confident and things like that so that's me and today we are talking about one of my favorite subjects meditation so meditation, um, for me, I have got a toolbox of 50 tools, which are all really useful for keeping healthy uh, physically and mentally. And meditation is number one. So I love that we're talking about this today because I think a lot of people like the idea of meditation. Maybe they start a meditation practice, do a couple of days and then kind of it tails off. Um, and I wanted to just give a few ideas as to what the benefits of meditation are um, in the hope that people will grasp onto the fact that it's worth spending a few minutes every day on. So I will spend at least five minutes and then if I've got more time, I'll do like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. Um, but I will never spend less than five minutes just being quiet and still and just getting into that um, space in my mind. And that's because I know the benefits and I know that they are not just like years and years ago. We were told, people were told by these yogis, by these what we call seers of the benefits because they had experienced them for themselves. They had this direct experience, but there wasn't all this proof like, yes, yeah, but how do we know? And does it work for everyone? And people just trusted, you know, if you were, if you went and sought the help of one of these seers, then they, they would tell you that the benefits were that it would reduce your stress levels. It would definitely reduce your overthinking. It would improve your mood, your self-confidence your focus and memory so if you're struggling to remember words you know um as we get older and you're like what was that word and you're struggling to remember that. i know what yeah. you mean <laughs> just Getting like that age what is that word <laughs> but our memories like we lose if we don't if we don't build the muscle so it's a practice of keeping your mind focused on one task and, and being more mindful it improves your memory which is great it also helps your immune response, which is amazing. At, in the times we're living now, everyone's quite, quite keen on that. Um, and there's lots of reasons behind why it does this. There's lots of proof. There's lots of studies. So we don't have to just take it on faith now like people did thousands of years ago. We know because there is loads of studies been done. We can now get um, maps and pictures of our brains. They can even photograph our auras now. We know that these things are real. Um, it, it can help improve your sleep and patience and tolerance. So if you knew, like you knew 100% that this little thing that's free and it's accessible to everybody and you can just do it in five minutes a day, I don't understand why everyone's not doing it because I know everybody cleans their teeth. I don't, I've never spoken to anybody that doesn't clean their teeth, oh, but yet some, well, <laughs> yeah, some people exactly. say to me, I don't have the time to meditate. 
Um, mm. And so this is this is why I wanted to just talk about it today mm. to say, why would you not do it? Yeah. I get, I, I meditate myself. Um, we'll go into that a bit later, how my meditation works for me, but completely get what you're saying. Um, that people don't seem to understand one, how po- important it is, or don't seem to have the time, which mm. if it can be done in just five minutes, surely everyone has got five minutes in the day. So I think if people haven't got five minutes, mm. and I know people feel like they don't have five minutes, those people need to do it more than anyone else. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like if you can't find five minutes in the day, what's going on with you yeah <laughs> then that's a concern yeah. if you don't yeah. ever have five minutes peace and five minutes space and five minutes where you're not on your phone mm-hmm. you know you're not distracted by the tv or technology or noise and over stimulation from information mm-hmm. you're, you're you're heading for burnout 100 mm-hmm. percent. so for those people that haven't tried or may have tried and kind of given up because I know I've cried I've tried many a time and gone oh god this isn't working and then obviously realized that's maybe um what I might not be doing right how do you actually start so there are different ways to meditate and they really fall into kind of two camps and one is what we call like witness consciousness or just open monitoring So that's where you would sit and just be absolutely silent and you maybe set a timer for 10 minutes and you would just sit or you'd put on a piece of music and you would just sit and you would witness what goes on. So you would witness your own mind (laughs) and that can be a bit scary. (laughs) So that's why people don't like what's going on in their own mind and they get uncomfortable and go, oh God, I'm out. Um, or they just sit and think well that was no use I was just thinking for 10 minutes so what's the point I wasn't even meditating what is meditating what kind of state should I be in and why am I not floating off my cushion yet and then there's this other um, meditative type which is more um, there are lots of different techniques that fit under that that umbrella but it's a focused attention So focus attention could be anything that helps you to focus your attention on something other than normally where you're just like watching TV or having a conversation or listening to a podcast or reading a book or doing some work. So you're bringing your mind like into this focused attention. And this most people find easier. I'll put like easier in inverted commas because I do know I have spoken to people that say, oh God, I can't do that. I, I hate guided meditations and things and I would much rather just sit and let thoughts come and go but I think for most people because it's just whoa there's no rules it's just this container of right sit there for 10 minutes and see what happens most people need a bit of structure or a bit of a a something to help their mind which left on um unguided left without rules the mind kind of goes oh what am I supposed to be doing because the mind wants to be thinking that's its job the mind the brain it's it's a it's a computer it kind of wants to solve problems so it will just start going oh what about that conversation you had last week with such a body <laughs> and do you know you probably were out of order then because they were really pissed off with you and you didn't da, da, da. and then you start you just 10 minutes is up and you're like well that was rubbish all I did was think about last week I got really angry with that person and no, it wasn't my fault. It was their fault. And you get into all that and you get into the narrative. Mm. So focused attention, you could choose to focus your attention on your body. So you could say, mm. right, we are going to witness sensations in our body. So you could do a body scan, which you go through your body from head to toe. You could do that yourself, or you could listen to a guided meditation on that, mm. which will keep your mind occupied and be less likely to wander off. And you could do that on lots of different things. So you could do that on the breath. You could do that on a word or a phrase, what we call mantra meditation. You could meditate with your eyes open. So you could gaze at a candle or a stone or a crystal. So you're bringing your mind back to 
the flame present. over and over again and to the, to the present moment. So there's lots of different ways that you can do focused attention or you could choose to do the open monitoring. So there are so many different ways that you can meditate. There's not really one size fits all. So there's something for everyone. And I might be wrong, but haven't your brain kind of go off and think? Isn't that a part, a big part of meditation anyway, that it, our brain is there to think? It thinks God does how many things a day. So to try and stop it, when you're meditation, when you're meditating, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And I think that's going to lead to you getting fed up and stopping. You know, if you think the goal of meditation is to stop your thoughts and the fact that you can't do it and you just get crosser and crosser and crosser, then it's kind of like defeating the object. Um, and it's, it's having an expectation on something that, you know, is, the Buddha said expectation leads to suffering so you are expecting some outcome from that 10 minutes and when you're not getting it you just get annoyed with it whereas what what I, I like one of the best analogies that I like I think it was um, from the guy that does headspace that I first heard it um, is the one where you're standing on the side of a road and you oh, are yeah. watching the cars and your thoughts are the cars. And another one that I've I've heard that I quite like is the blue sky and the white mm. clouds. Yeah. So if you're doing open monitoring where you're not listening to something and you're being guided and you want to just create, you, you really crave a little bit of space and your thoughts are just like, duh, 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 duh. if what, what we tend to do, and you'll know this, the next time you have a shower, I'll give you a little challenge. <laughs> See if you can count how many thoughts that you had like separate thoughts whilst you're in that shower and you'll probably fail because they blend and merge and go into it in so it's still very difficult because you like mm -hmm. say you start thinking about say you, start you count your thoughts and you're, when you're counting that's a thought so how, oh god <laughs> yeah, but it, they they yeah, i get you spin off from each yeah. other and mm -hmm. what happens is we get involved mm -hmm. um in the narrative so you might be thinking about what you're going to do for Christmas and who's going to come over for Christmas during your meditation it pops in and then that thought bleeds into another thought because you got oh do you know what when so and so came last year then they didn't get on or but I, I tell you what I better not sit them next to each other because this happened or um oh they got me this gift and it was really thoughtful what am I going to get them this year and then before you know it yeah, you have about 70,000 thoughts a day. Most of them are rubbish and pointless and repetitive. And you probably had about 60,000 of them during your 10-minute meditation, but oh, you've no yeah. idea. You don't know where you went, where you started. So the idea would be more to stand on the side of the road. And if you see that thought come in as, as a little car that starts to drive past, which is about who's coming around for Christmas, as soon as you see it coming up the road, you don't get in the car and you don't go off for a drive and start going down that back street with the Christmas thought that leads to 25 other Vanty thoughts. Mildred. Yeah. You go, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. You might stick a little flag on the top of the car that says, I'm kind of a bit worried about Christmas or something. Mm -hmm. And then you just let it drive off and you come back to the side of the road or you come back to that blue sky and you take a breath and you go, right, we'll start again and then you wait and then another little car drives up the road and that's got a different thought in it, it might be something completely different it might be like oh what am I going to do if I put on a stone over Christmas and that's like mm. ah, weight loss I might be thinking something yeah. about weight loss stick a little flag or a, a bumper sticker or whatever it is and let it drive off and that's the practice that's mm. where the work and the magic happens it's how much presence can you have to not get in the car or not jump on the cloud but can you watch witness and let it move on by because that's how you will then like a muscle you'll build that muscle so that you'll create more space and the road will become quieter or the sky will become bluer because the, the quiet road and the blue sky is always there behind our thoughts but because we've got so many of them and it's so busy in there, it's difficult at first to get the glimpse of that 
blue sky but when you do it makes you want to come back for more because it feels glorious it feels amazing it feels refreshing and then you're getting all those benefits that I mentioned earlier from your mm. meditation in just five ten minutes a day so it's like with it crikey because physical exercise the more you do it the better you get at it so exactly you, you're thinking that you're going to get this nailed down you know five minutes done no uh, 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 don't work like that work no, it out. it requires it dedication it requires commitment and it requires practice and so once you've made it a habit and you said, this is non-negotiable, this is part of my daily routine, you will then start to see, you know, that your sleep improves, that you're, you're like, oh, I don't remember the last time I got a cold. You know, it's holistic. It's kind of, it's not one thing, you know, if you, if you meditate for five minutes a day, but then your diet is still rubbish and you go to bed at three o'clock in the morning and you're stressed it's out, and it's, you. you know, it's going <laughs> to help yeah. as, as that's why I have so many tools in my toolkit <laughs> because health and wellness is a big subject right yeah. so but it's something that is number one for a reason and I wouldn't miss it yeah. out so which one would you say um is it guided meditation or silence which one is would you say is better or they're both as good as one another yeah I think it's there isn't one that's better than another and I think part partly because if you're somebody that is going to struggle with open monitoring, um, and especially in the beginning, if that means that you're not going to take that five, 10 minutes of downtime to bring your mind to a focused point, then if you were to say, oh, guided meditation's no good kind of thing, then that's, that's going to stop a lot of people from accessing mm -hmm. meditation. And I, I like variety anyway. So some days I'll want to choose I don't want to listen to a guided meditation. I, I want that space and I'll, I'll choose to do the open monitoring. But some days it's nice to put on, you know, a beautiful meditation, be guided on a little journey, you know, going on a forest walk and mm. visualizing the animals and the noises and the birds and, and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's nice. Also, I use guided meditation often for going to sleep and it's just a really nice way to, nod off at the end of the, of the mm. night so if you struggle with sleep and if you struggle with fitting meditation in and you're that person that says i don't have five minutes i've got busy busy life big demanding job big family da 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 then everyone puts their head on a pillow at night to try and sleep and if you're that person that doesn't have five minutes you're probably going to be somebody that struggles with sleep so this is when maybe you would choose to create your habit and, and start your meditation practice so a guided meditation, again, is going to be more useful there because if your mind is like, because as soon as you put your head on the pillow and you have not long, you've no longer got the, the distractions that you've been keeping yourself distracted with all day to stop you from being alone with your thoughts. They all come in at night then like, ha, ah, what about this? And what about that? And oh, that's you, when you like, Mildred will oh, come God, back. Yeah, why can't I get to sleep? <laughs> so if you then choose to put on a guided meditation or a little story, then it's going to keep your mind from being distracted and mm. it's going to help you get off to sleep. So why not choose to do a guided meditation at night? Mm. So there's not really one that's better than another. I think they, they all have their place. And what I would say is like everything, you know, like, like if we was to say about exercising and I was to say, well, is CrossFit better than yoga or is dancing better than swimming? Well, if you hate swimming and you detest it and you're never going to get in the water, so that means you're going to sit on the couch, then, you know, dancing, zumba, walking's better than swimming because you're never going to go swimming. So if you're going to do something and you like a guided over a, a silent meditation, then go with it, try it. So I think try all the different kinds and see which you prefer. Yeah, definitely. Now, my meditation, I... I don't know whether this is weird or or not, but um, I don't, I can sit and meditate, but my favourite is actually meditation when I'm, when I'm running. And a lot of people might say, how on earth can you meditate when you're running? But when you think of it, I'm focusing on one thing, and that is, I need to breathe. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, and if I'm not breathing well, there you go. Um, but you can't really focus on a heck of a lot of things. Well, I can't anyway, but I'm running. So that is my meditation when I'm running. So can it be done anyway? Can it be done like that? Am I meditating? Am I kidding myself? <laughs> no, no, absolutely. I mean, one of the ways you can meditate is a walking meditation. And as long as you're in that present moment and you're mindful of what you're doing and you're not thinking about Auntie Mildred, Auntie Mildred might become famous through this. I'm series. sorry for anyone I don't know. that's got an Auntie Mildred. I know. Do write in and let us know. <laughs> Do comment. <laughs> but some people might be running and not be completely sure of how they got from one place to another because they were in their head and they were thinking mm. so if you're aware of the sensation of your heartbeat if you're aware of the sensation of your breathing if you're aware of the sights and the sounds around you you know the, the people that you're passing the leaves on the trees the color of the sky then you're completely present and I heard I heard a lot of people say this about running you know it's that time when their mind just becomes just completely focused yeah. you know you get that runner's high because you've also got those endorphins and things kicking in so absolutely you know that is a completely legitimate way to say I'm meditating and some people will get that if they get really involved in an activity like sewing mm. or knitting or colouring, you know, mindful colouring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as you're giving your brain that space to stop being bombarded by external stimulus, such as information, input, 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 you know, and you're giving it that, it's like putting it on the off switch or the standby switch just for a little while, then that's, that's the magic and that's where you get the benefits. And it doesn't matter whether you're sitting, standing, lying down, whether you can cross your legs, whether you've got your eyes closed or open, you know, whether you're moving or not, it doesn't matter. Mm. The whole thing is about bringing your awareness yeah. into that moment. I think and that's watching where your thoughts. a lot of people can struggle. It's that sort of that you've got to be cross-legged and... Um... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it's all very serious, you know, as soon as we sit down <laughs> to meditate, it has to be like... <gasps> so serious and also I'm meditating <laughs> on that point which is just it's just reminded me of something that's actually really good I'm not sure I've said this very often <clears throat> when talking about meditation is people think that the environment has to be perfect as well and that's why some people think oh I can't meditate because I've got a busy house or you know I'm never on my own I used to meditate on the train mm -hmm. going into Manchester to work on the commute so sometimes I would be stood up because I didn't get a seat. Mm. And although I was careful not to fall over, so I might have been holding on to the pole or something, but I would close my eyes. And sometimes maybe you think people think you're a bit weird and you're having a sleep standing up, but <laughs> he's fine because I could either stand there and get annoyed that it's packed again. You can't mm. get a seat. It's hot. It's not a great place to be. Or you can go inwards and you can think I've got 20 minutes, half an hour's time here. I can either scroll through my phone and just mm. constantly be bombarded by more emails and noise and input or I can like witness my thoughts or listen to a guided meditation get off the train at the other end and everyone else is angry you know people used to be angry shouting at the conductor and it's not even his fault and I would be getting off the train going oh thanks very much you know it must be tough for you oh you have a good day you know it's a completely different experience so having to wait until the external situation is perfect and there's no noise I mean that's a bit extreme not asking everyone to meditate on the train but say you're trying to meditate at home and the bin men come round or the digger goes past or whatever and then you're like oh well that's ruined because there's a noise it doesn't have to be like that because you can bring that into your meditation you can use it as part and parcel of it and go hmm there's a noise it's like one of the little cars going past that we talked about before it's just another distraction just notice it let it go past i'm sure that's the point of meditation yeah that, um, let's face it who the bloody hell has got you know a completely silent you know time around them um i don't think really 
you know if you have please let us know i'm going to come round and <laughs> yeah it sounds amazing but there's so but, um, many times that i'm meditating where something will happen or the cat starts meowing or you know one of the pets needs something or somebody's comes into the room and it, you know mm -hmm. you say you don't have to like open your eyes and you, know, you yeah. it's that it's that discipline it's that it's the fact that you've set aside those 10 minutes and it is what it is the experience is the experience whether you happen what yeah happens. and you know you've just done it then it's just like cleaning your teeth it's done tick it off go about your day and you'll find that your day starts to go much better you're more calmer you're able to be more present in other moments in your life because you started to train that muscle yeah. you started to get that awareness and you're less trigger happy with your emotions you're less reactive mm. so in essence it's all kind of about letting your day go as it would but being kind of more in tune with it is that right yeah and i think just non-judgmental as well like whatever happens in your head be okay with it yeah. What ha whatever happens not in your head so around the room that you're in around the outside of the building that you're in be okay with that um and it just teaches us so much more patience and tolerance when we're not meditating we often say like the yoga mat is like a mirror um and what we do on the mat how we react to that you know how we react to doing a pose that maybe isn't our favorite pose or how we react to a thought that comes up in meditation it's it's how you react to everything mm. so it teaches you so you learn about yourself so much yeah really but a do. lot a lot of people don't make the time to just sit and be present and be quiet for that 10 minutes a day five ten minutes a day and i think if if more people did it it would definitely be a better world to live in sounds like a good note to wrap up on i think <laughs> absolutely <laughs> better world to live in Oh, Yay. I'm sure there's a song in there somewhere. <laughs> I'm not going to go off on one. Absolutely. Oh, that was brilliant, uh, Adele. Um, I loved that. I I found out a lot about meditation there because I, you know, I had preconceptions for many years about it, but it's it is it's just a a wonderful thing to do and just bring into your daily yeah, routine. And, and not that scary not that nope. serious not not that much nope. to it really it's just be a bit light-hearted with it find a method that works for you but just do it that's mm. that's the message really just however it is do it walking do it read do it reading mindfully read and do it do it sewing do it knitting do it you the know you watching a candle it. yeah, yeah just, just and play with it mm. um you know it's the it's the new year i guess when this is going out it's january and how what a great intention you know if you haven't set your intentions for the year yet then maybe a daily meditation practice could be the one for you absolutely so if you've enjoyed this episode of the mind mood and food podcast which is super super exciting for margaret and i to be bringing to you this has been a long time in the planning we've been oh like God, yeah. trying to get this done for about <laughs> a year or something um and if you've enjoyed it, then do hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell, hit the notification uh, bell so that so that you're alerted when when the new one is released. We're doing these every fortnight at the moment and we'll see how that goes, whether you want them more regularly than that or less. Let us know. Um, let us know how you found it. Give us some feedback. And we will see you next time. Thank you for listening. Thank Bye you. for now. Bye. Bye.